Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report with yours truly, the Algo Capitalist. Today is Thursday, September the 6th, 2018. All right, so we have Take Back Friday on the horizon. Tomorrow will be Take Back Friday. It's a short holiday trading week. What can we expect? To be quite honest with you, I think the stock indexes are going to really try to make a run for it and recuperate from the losses. But you never know. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so for the first chart, we're looking at the financial sector. All right, this is the financial select spider, ticker is XLF. All right, and you see that right here. Follow the cursor. You see it right here on the top left-hand corner right here. XLF. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me do this. Cause I know everybody is not like me. Here you go. XLF. All right. You see that? This is where you see the ticker at. Okay. All right. So, what do we got? Got a couple things. First of all, you can see that the market is trading just slightly above. The Kumo cloud here, you have positive momentum going on. You're in the uptrend channel right now, and the market is trying to decide pretty much what it wants to do, where it wants to go from here. Um, as long as the financial sector can remain strong and rally, it could help to bol bolster stocks. We'll see. There's been so much news out, ladies and gentlemen. Just so much news. Um, I just don't have the time to get into all of it. But I'm sure you guys you know, are abreast. You know what's going on in the world. And right now, price action is saying it doesn't care. All right? it's Momentum's kind of leveled off, but you're still in a bullish configuration. If prices dip into this Kumo cloud, then... Um, you know, you, you could start to say that perhaps the rally would be over. But you do have uh, trend line support inside of the Kumo cloud right here. All right, so that being said, the market is supported at $27.50 and $27.33 respectively. So you have that um, the area of support between 33 and 50. All right, so if the market did pull back, it could still be supported here and springboard itself right back out again. So right now, everything the momentum is leveling out. You still have an uptrend complexion, so the market is, is still bullish at this at this time. All right, let's move on to the next one here so we can get done all this as quickly as possible. All right, and we got... All right, the next one here is the home builders. Ticker is XHB. We're in the downtrend channel. Market's trying to get some positive momentum here in this market, being that under the negative momentum channel here, market did not fall. So I think the market's trying to get ready to break out here. You do have strong resistance at the bottom of the Kumo cloud there. All right, and that's going to be around $41.72. That's where your resistance is right now. Uh, in order to prevent from jumping off the cliff, this market is definitely going to need to close tomorrow uh, above $39.68. All right, if we can do it, then it could build up enough energy for a breakout next week. So we shall see on the home builders all right but right now it's in a bear market there you got a, you got a downtrend channel they're trading below the kumo cloud however the long-term trend line resistance all right is right here inside of this cloud so you know at 42 dollars and 71 cents that's where that is if it can start to get outside the cloud that could be helpful to help pull these trend lines up and inside the cloud as well. You have a lot of issues to work out here price action wise from a te technical standpoint. So 
right now I have to say that any kind of possible run up is going to be met with selling. So any kind of rally is going to be hit with selling. You got hit back here with the selling. Let me just highlight that for you. All right, you this rally here got sold. All right, this rally here got sold. All right, so is this going to be the next one? If so, this could put in an, another leg down and you could find yourself falling south of $37 a share on the uh, the home builders. All right, so that's that on that one. All right, moving right along. All right, the next one here is the bond market. Ticker is TLT. All right, all right, as you can see here, still in a bear market, but you're in an uptrend channel, meaning that the market is trying to rally off of the support lows made back here during the week of May the 18th of 2018. So you got to deal with this kind of gap we got up in here too. The bottom of the Kumo cloud is proving to be very strong resistance at $121.81. Uh, this market is having a, a problem with that 122 ceiling. And $122 is a strong resistance right now for this market. So we'll see if it can kind of break up in and out of the cloud top side, or is this rally going to be sold just like before you were sold here? You got sold here. So I think that the market uh, is going to come down. It looks like it's going to test support again down up in here. If this fails, then you're going to see a retest of the prior lows. And that's back in here. OK. And this right here is the $116 handle. All right. So that's four dollars away. All right. So it's not too far away, but this is where you are right now. This market's kind of just range bound trading, trying to get something going, trying to get a uh, a nice uh, trend line going to, to the top side. It's a very uh, narrow um, cloud you got here, so it shouldn't be too hard to punch through it. But right now, 122, like I said, is showing it's a tough resistance. Not to mention, you're trying to get some positive momentum entering the market here, but yet prices are falling. So, and in the last run, you had the bearish momentum entering the market. The market did come down, but it rallied right, right through it. All right, so we'll see if we can get something going. Right now, this is this is a bear market bounce off the lows. You know, not what more can I tell you? All right, going to the next chart here, we got, all right, this is the semiconductors. Ticker is SMH, Sam Mark Henry. And this one's just range bound, as you can see. Not a lot going on. You got the uptrend channel going, but there's nothing happening. It seems like every little attempt at a rally is being sold. The market just can't get anything going. You sold that rally. You sold this rally. And now this rally is looking like it's starting to get sold too. Chances are prices can possibly fall into the Kumo cloud. And you're in jeopardy if that happens of the market falling below the $95 handle. Okay. So that's where you are right now with the semiconductors, all right? Not a lot, not a whole lot going. You're just in a range, you're range bound, but it looks like the market could be ready to fall off of a cliff. So you got to keep your eyes and ears open on that one. Uh, take profits quickly and be ready to, uh, to exit your positions there. All right, taking a look now at the next chart. We got the uh, silver miners, the junior silver miners. Ticker is SILJ, and as you can see here, this is a downtrend channel. It's with gaining downside momentum, starting to break away here. You got this, um, you got this gap here, all right, that the market experienced. Gaining downside momentum, the market wants to fall, all right, into the abyss. 
wants to drop sub six bucks possibly it's just looking really nasty wouldn't be surprised if they do one of those uh reverse joints you know those um you know what i'm talking about i'm tired so i can't think straight but you, you know what i'm talking about reverse stocks but there you go to get it back up to like 20 25 dollars a share because right now man you're you're mad weak right here okay mad weak all right you're at, you're at the eight dollar handle looking to go to six and even below beyond that so this thing is not anywhere near bottoming there is no bottom right now you're on a weekly chart and there's no bottom there is no bottom even here on the monthly chart you can you see how much farther you can go you can you can drop you can drop big time there's nowhere else for it to go all right so what do we do there's nothing you can do if you bought at a obscene price and you didn't do anything you didn't take profits you just have to ride this one out uh, i don't know if this is one of those markets that has a, a viable options market if it does then you can you can go ahead and write some premiums but other than that uh, if this thing were to change course right now it would need to uh, close above nine dollars and 23 cents tomorrow to put in an immediate short-term bottom right away barring that you're just in a bear market and it's just doesn't seem to have an end in sight right now all right our next chart is jnug haven't talked about jnug in a hot minute let's see what's up all right jnug still in that downtrend channel too all right just no end in sight on this one you're still in a bear market and you're just you're you're threatening to break into the six dollar handle here too this one's closer to breaking into six dollars than the last chart you're at seven dollars and ten cents on the close today and your momentum is just point everything's pointing down looking south market's going to need to close to uh tomorrow above nine dollars and 49 cents in order to put in a short-term bottom so chances of that happen is zero to none you got your trend lines and price action all trading below the Kumo cloud. So, and you got strong bearish momentum locked in here. What can you do? It's not a whole lot you can do at all. This thing has just been just decimated. You know what you're gonna do? Just look how bad it has gotten. Look how bad it is on this thing. When you pull up the yearly, you just see how far it has dropped. Look at this. You were way up. You were way up here, way up yonder. All right, all things being equal, with all the splits and stuff you had, this thing would have been at eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars and sixty cents, and it has dropped all the way down to seven dollars. You know that is crazy. All right, this is on the on the yearly the yearly chart. So just just crazy, you know. No end no end in sight. Just 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 a bear market. Any way you slice it, it's just bearish. It's just bearish for no reason. You know, <laughs> this thing is just it's toast. What you gonna do? What can you do with toast? You can't do nothing with toast. You know, it's a toast market. Look at it. It's not going anywhere. Not even trying to go nowhere. It's just straight down. All right, you're into new lows. It's just done right now. It's one of the reasons why you haven't heard me really talking about it because it's, it's it's bearish. Well, what can you do? Nothing. The thing is wood. It's dead. All right, let's look at uh, JNK junk bond ETF. All right, bear market. Bear market gap down here on this one we're back to our weekly chart you got your gap and this thing is threatening to fall off a cliff and drop below 35 bucks folks all right take out this last low here all right and put you some somewhere down up in here thing is threatening to drop below 30, 35 what you gonna do 
uh, price action is below the Kumo cloud, all but your longer term trend line. Your longer term trend line resistance is not, uh, that's at $36.30. It's currently uh, trading right smack in the middle of the cloud here. If it drops below the cloud, all bets are off. If it turns up, maybe there's hope that a short term bottom will finally be in place, but this is looking a little nasty here. All right, so you gotta call it what it is. Bear market, nothing bullish on the chart. No, it's not bottomed yet. All right, next market, GDXJ. All right, here you go. Hit breaking down into new lows, price action, trend lines, momentum lines, everything's below the Kumo cloud. Mm, this thing is not ready to turn. It's just a bear market. Put in a new leg. And this thing is threatening to drop below 20 bucks. All right, so your gold junior miners are just looking whizzack right now. All right, moving forward, let's look at silver. Silver futures straight down. Everything is powerful to the downside. Momentum's accelerating. Trend lines and price action all trading below the Kumo cloud. Your trend line, your downtrend channel is also below the trend, the Kumo cloud. Everything's just accelerating and pointing down. If by some miracle this thing was to turn around uh, and rally for Friday, for Take Back Friday, it would need to close above $14.76 just to put in a short term bottom. All right. So chances of that happening are slim to none. But you never know. Right now, though, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So it's been down 12 out of the last 13 weeks. Straight down. Markets rarely move like this in a straight down pattern line like that. This is a straight down. Crazy market bearish and I don't know what else to tell you on that one your momentum is locked in here all right bear moment every this the moment everything is just bearish it's like nothing bullish in the chart whatsoever right here people took some profit but then they got right back in the market again so the, the the bears are in complete control of silver right now not something that that a bullish perspective wants to hear looking at the Nasdaq 100 futures it's just straight up all right yeah the markets pulled back you know, that's healthy, pulling back like you did back here. But you're trading right near the bottom of the trend line, so chances are you're going to trigger buying to take back Friday. I think this market's about to be big back up again. You're still under uh, bullish momentum right here, and your, your trend lines and price action are all happening on the north side of the Kumo cloud. I think the market's getting ready to run back up. Just like it's done before, wash, rinse, repeat, right? All right. We came and touched the, the trend line here, rallied. Sold off back in here, rallied. A fake pull back here, rallied. Nice pull back here and rallied. Every time the market pulls back, it's setting up for a rally. Every pullback is being bought, folks even the slightest, and then it rips to new highs. So this is where we are. Now, I will say this in all fairness. This market's going to need to recover and bounce tomorrow. It needs to close above 7508 and a quarter in order to hold on to the bullish momentum. If not, it loses that momentum and is in jeopardy of a sell-off for the following week. Now, I know back up in hither, we lost it right here. You gained your market rally the following week. Lost it here. Market, well, actually, no, you, you kept it there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we'll see. Right now, everything on the chart is still bullish. There's nothing bearish on the chart. It's just correcting. We really haven't had a correction in a while. All right, looking at the gold futures. All right, gold futures straight down like the silver, but a little bit better yet, more green on the screen. And this one has already tried to stage a comeback rally. Our uh, market needs to close above 11.9550 tomorrow in order to maintain a bullish momentum outlook. Yes, price action and trend lines are south of the Kumo cloud, 
but the market looks like it may be trying to stage a rally and put in a short term low for next week. So tomorrow is going to be key on how this market moves. We'll see what happens, but it may be the goal wants to try to retrace a little bit. We'll see. Can't say the same for silver. All right. Uh, let's see. Bitcoin futures. Take a look at this one. All right. As you can see, the market tried to do a little something here and then got smoked. Tried to do a little something again. And now it's also being smoked. This one's threatening to fall apart. And all things being equal, this kind of price action continues. We're going to see 3,000 real soon. Downtrend channel right here is in full effect. Market tomorrow needs to close above 66.45.85. If it does not tomorrow, then it keeps the door open for possibility of major selling next week. If it regains that momentum, then you could probably make another pushback up here toward this resistance level up here. And that's going to be somewhere around the 85 level. And you're at 64 now, so I don't know. Uh, you got locked in bearish momentum too. This one's looking dangerous. The only interesting thing about this chart, though, I must, I must say, long-term momentum's outside the Kumo cloud. All right, when that long-term momentum trend line is outside the Kumo cloud like that, is north of the Kumo cloud, that usually suggests that any kind of sell-off that we see in this could be short-lived and the market could be bid back up. Not enough data on here to show past performance because it's a new contract, so I really can't show you that here. But it's just one of those things, okay? So we'll see. This is an interesting one because, you know, it's a new contract. You know, ain't been around but a minute. You just started trading it in December of 2017. So you're not even a year old yet. So this is where it is. You know, all right? It's one of those babies that takes them a little bit longer to, to, to learn how to walk. One thing you can do right now is crawl and fall right on its chin you know how little infants crawl on you put them on on their stomach and then so they can try to crawl and their neck muscles ain't that strong yet so the head they lift their head up but then it drops back down on the on the bed you know what i'm talking about so that's what bitcoin is right now it's it's, it's the little teeny infant trying to you know trying to build up his neck muscles Every time it, it lifts his head up, like right here, it falls back down, okay? Lift his head up back in here and fell down. It's, try, it's trying. He's trying to crawl. It's trying to crawl. It's try, see, he crawled right here. He crawled right here. The baby crawled right here, you know? And then you know how they, they, they stick their head up and, and, and those little cute little cheeks that when they, when they smile and they don't have no teeth, it's just gums and, 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 and little infants just laugh and they laugh too and they smiling at you and slob is coming down. You know, they have that little cute little little slob, you know, and that's what's happening right here. And then the, the head falls back down. So this is where you are right now. It, 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 the neck muscles and the Bitcoin futures ain't, ain't strong yet. But if, if it keeps acting like it's been acting up in here. You can build a you can build a good argument for a case for a support base that's trying to be built. All right, it's trying to build a base so that it can rally to the moon. All right, eventually, once this market matures, I do believe still that we're going to break twenty two thousand rather quickly. But we may have to head back down here first. All right. We're going to put up some bumpers around the crib so that, you know, the baby don't fall out the crib <laughs> and fall south. All right. So if this market does not hold this line, then the baby will fall out of the crib. And then that's where Child Protective Services will get involved 
for Bitcoin futures child abuse. And they'll say, what's wrong with this market? Why is all this happening? And I can tell you one of the reasons why this market is, is not maturing as fast as it really could be. And that's because the way they designed it and set it up. Instead of making it just like a regular normal futures contract, they put it so you can only you only you can only use limit orders. You can't even use stops. That's why most people are not bothering with it. Ain't nobody stupid. They're not gonna trade a futures contract you can't put stops in. Protective stops on futures? Are you kidding me? When this market can move a thousand points in, in seconds, and you can tell me I can't put a stop in, well, you gotta be out of your mind. Nobody's gonna trade that. They need to they need to stop that and make it like all the other futures contracts where you can trade all the different order types. Market orders, limit orders, stop orders, all that fancy stuff. Market on close, market on open, you know, all or nothing, fill a kill, all of that. You need to bring all of that into this, make it like a regular futures contract, then I will trade it, and everybody else will jump on the bandwagon and be trading this thing, and then maybe we can see this thing push back up 22,000 so that people can make their money back who got their faces ripped off when they bought the market way back up in here. All right, so that's Bitcoin futures. Okay, let's see what else we got. Moving right along. All right, we got the U.S. dollar index. All right, U.S. dollar index. Yeah, you got this uptrend channel right here, but it just broke it. All right, it just broke its support, and it's looking like it wants to pull back south of 94.50. That will help lift the euro, and it also could help lift commodities like the soybeans, you know, the grains and stuff. I know that a lot of the commodities are, you know, they're really beholden to weather patterns and things of that nature, but it also helps when you have a weaker dollar. All right, so as long as the dollar stays strong, your commodities are going to stay in bear markets and stay soft. So the dollar pulling back can be a good thing for our import-export situation, but then with the, when you add the tariffs to it, the, all the markets are messed up. Those The tariff thing and trade wars is, ter is messing with the markets. It's ruining the markets. They need to stop it. And then, you know, you want to worry about your commodities being all crazy like they've been. All right. So anyway, your dollar is looking like, you know, this is the beginning of a downtrend channel. That bullish momentum from that last run is over. It's, it's finished. All right. You see, it's finished. We're not under a bull anymore. You're neutral right now with the possibility of a bear momentum kicking in, creeping in. If that happens, then the market falls down. And, and it will probably drop below the Kumo cloud back down to about 90. All right, that's it for the US dollar. Okay, and it has lost momentum on the weekly. This market would need to rally back and close tomorrow above 95.60 just to gain back that momentum or face the consequence of negative momentum coming in and sellers beating the price back down. All right, so that's your U.S. dollar index. All right, and that's it. All right, so remember, PulseWayTrading.com. Come and take the study, the free study course with your subscription to the weekly PulseWay price triggers. And I've been, the um, only thing I can tell you is come check it out, see for yourself. I'm not going to toot my own horn, uh, but these price triggers are the bomb. That's all I can tell you. You want to catch trends in the market. You want to catch breakouts in the market. You want to know when the market is going to rally or crash ahead of the crowd so that you can get on there. That's the weekly pulse wave uh, price triggers with the rally and crash alerts delivered to you before the move of the market. That's right. You're alerted to the moves right before they happen. And remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember to take what you can and give nothing back. Peace.